It's not just an ordinary Tuesday. Welcome to Terrier Tuesdays, the show where you can get to know some of Boston University's best and brightest student athletes. Welcome to another episode of Terrier Tuesdays. My name is Scott Ellis, and I'm joined by women's tennis alum, Carrie Stakem. Uh, Carrie, how are things going for you and your family? Things are good. Um, we are surviving the pandemic and excited to uh, welcome in 2021. It's been um, a crazy year, as I'm sure it's been for all. Um, I, I have two boys. I have a six and a half year old and a three and a half year old. So um, working from home full time, my husband and I um, with with two young boys has, has brought its challenges. Um, but we actually welcomed an au pair into our family in August to help for the year. So that's made a lot of a big difference this year. So uh, we're very, as you can imagine, December with two little boys. It's very uh, exciting for Santa to come. We celebrate Christmas. So um, there's a lot of uh, excitement in the house right now. Did y'all get to do anything uh, for Halloween? Oh, Halloween is probably the second biggest holiday in the house. Yes. And we went and everyone in the neighborhood was fantastic. They either had shoots that they put, so you, like they did social distancing, so you didn't have to go up and ring the doorbell. They either have shoots of candy that came down or they left it out. So we seem to have hit double the houses that we normally hit um, without seeing anyone. Um, and it was it was probably one of the better Halloweens that we've had. So it was great. Awesome. Well, I mean, the first thing I want to know is what led you uh, to pursue an athletic career in tennis? Did you play other sports growing up and decide on tennis or was tennis like basically your first love? Yeah, so I actually grew up playing almost every sport um, except I think field hockey and lacrosse. Those are like two sports I never really got into. I think we just didn't have much of it in our town growing up. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much played every sport growing up and would run from sport to sport. And um, it probably was around seventh grade where I said, you know, I really love tennis. I knew I loved tennis from the beginning. Probably I started when I was like five or six. Um, my mom, my dad, my aunt introduced me to tennis and I just I immediately fell in love with it. But um, probably around seventh or eighth grade, I said, you know what, I, I want to focus my efforts on, you know, one or two sports versus six or seven sports that I'm doing now. And that's sort of how I, I focused on tennis. Um, you know, I obviously, I enjoyed the competition. I enjoyed, um, you know, it's a, it's an individual sport. So it's different in that you're, um, you know, competing against others when you're not like in college, obviously when you're on a team. Um, so that was a different dynamic to the soccer that I played. I played softball and, and other sports like that, but I sort of, um, I loved the competition and I loved um, the, you know, just growing as a professional in terms of, um, you know, skill set and things like that. So I, I, I just pursued my love of tennis as, as I went um, into my college years. And uh, just curious, uh, growing up when you knew tennis was kind of the sport you wanted to pursue, did you have uh, anyone you idolized? I mean, for myself, um, I definitely enjoyed watching Steffi Graf and Martina Navratilo. Were there people you kind of idolized in tennis? Yeah, I would say, yeah, as a, as a young girl, I looked up to like Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova. Um, I always remember on the men's side, like Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi. I think I actually shed a tear when Andre Agassi retired um, many years later. Um, you know, and obviously Jimmy Connors um, and McEnroe were, were some of the big ones. Um, I'm, I'm obviously aging myself here too. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love to watch tennis as, as much as play it. Um, and I don't, I don't have time now to keep up with all of the new new players, but I do like, you know, to even sometimes watch some of the old matches, some of the epic, um, you know, battles between some of those key players. Right. Well, I, I share with friends. I still remember when Wimbledon was on HBO. I do too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> think, think it's all dramatically changed now because now we have like ESPN plus, which actually mm -hmm. all our athletic teams are now on. Um, but what, what led you to decide on BU? I know you're from the area. Did you consider leaving the region or how did that whole process come about? Yeah, so I, um, so I actually, yeah, I looked out of the region. I looked, 
uh, down south. I hate the winter, so I do not like to be cold. Um, my mom, you know, would laugh because I, I never wanted to go outside of the house when it snowed. Um, so I think for sure they thought I was going to land in Florida or one of the Carolinas. Um, but I would say um, in my pursuit of looking for the ideal place for me, I fell in love with, um, well, obviously, I fell in love with the tennis program at BU and, and Leslie was, was a key factor of me joining um, BU. I wanted a, a strong education. Um, I knew I wanted to be a business major. Um, I thought I wanted to, to uh, major in accounting and I knew BU had a strong program there. Um, you know, and again, then I think the deciding factor, cause all, all the schools I was looking at were very strong academically. Cause I knew that I wasn't going to graduate and be a professional tennis player. I knew I was going to, probably enter the business world. Um, so for me, it came down to the coach and it came down to, um, you know, a team that I wanted to play um, four years on. I, I knew that I wanted to play my entire college career. Um, and so those were kind of the deciding factors. I still kind of remember the day, like Leslie and I, interestingly enough, grew up in the same town same hometown, uh, but I didn't really know her until I started looking at um, school. Like, I think I had heard her name, but it wasn't like, oh, I knew Leslie and I was going to go to BU for years on end. Um, so the first time I remember meeting Leslie, we had her to our house um, and she met with me, my mom and my dad. And I don't know why I just have this vivid memory of me like waving by to her thinking, I wonder if I'm going to go to BU one day. Um, and that was like 30 years ago. So <laughs> um, I could kind of joke with Leslie, you know, did you feel like we were drill you know, grilling you with questions when you came to our house? Because I think we were asking like, is there ever going to be an indoor facility? You know, some of those those questions you might ask as an athlete. Right. And I know um, at the time there was no automatic NCAA birth until I think 1999 was the first year. Did that play a part at all? Or what did um, not being able to participate? Because you won a conference title all four years. Yeah. Does it hurt knowing that you didn't get the chance to compete in the NCAA tournament during that time period? Yeah, I have to say, I do think about that often because we did win the conference every year and we never got an automatic bid because it changed um, after I graduated. Um, that that wasn't really a huge deciding factor for me going into um, what school I was going to choose because I think a lot of the schools I, I looked at were probably in the similar boat, um, you know, in, in terms of... Um, their programs, but it definitely would have been nice to have played in a couple NCAA tournaments. Um, so, right, yeah, no, because I always think about that looking at the, the record books and the history of the program. Because obviously, y'all were so successful in the region, and the sport was just starting to gain attraction yeah. at the collegiate level. But I mean, you were talking about your experiences with Leslie. I mean, what has she meant to you? I know uh, before we started this, you still stay in touch with Leslie. What has she meant to you? Yeah, I mean, Leslie, I mean, I consider her a good friend. God, I almost consider her like a sister. You know, she's a great role model. Um, she, I, I like, I, I look back and I couldn't have asked to play for a, a nicer, kinder um, individual who also was such a strong role model in molding me as much as a tennis player, but as a good human being and someone who is going to go out and do um good in society and do good, you know, in my career and just help others. Um, so I felt like she was very well-rounded in her approach and she was very collaborative. It wasn't like, here's what you need to do. And I'm, you know, you got to do what I say. It was sort of like, let's work together and figure out the best plan of attack, whether it was coming up with a um, workout program or whatever it was. So for me, it was a great uh, match to, um, to have her as, as my coach. I, have the utmost respect for her. And I think anyone that gets to play um, under Leslie is very lucky. And the program and the school itself obviously has a, a large international feel to it with students from all over the, the country and the world. I mean, for you being part of the athletic department and being on the women's tennis team, I mean, what was that uh, dynamic like? Yeah, so I have to say like going to BU and the international, I mean, it's a very diverse school and it really prepared me well for entering the business world. So between um, 
being on a team with a lot of, you know, um, diversity, but then also the Questrom School of Business. And, and a lot of times I was in a group where I was like the only one from the US, you know, so I learned so much about different cultures and about different um, ways of thinking and approaching situations. So being in the business world, that is like crucial um, to have. And so I felt like I had a leg up when I started working um, by having that experience at BU. Um, and, you know, it's just learning so much about other cultures while I was at BU, it just gave me a, a strong thirst to know more and to, you know, um, expand my own, um, cultural knowledge, even beyond my time at BU. Um, I think I mentioned before, we have an au pair living with us. She's from Columbia. We love learning about new cultures and, and traditions and things like that. And so that's, um, I think a big part of how, um, we want to raise my boys and just sort of live our lives. Right. And talking about being the question school of business. I mean, you were an academic, a academic all American. You won the uh, Gretchen Schuyler uh, award as the top uh, female scholar athlete. I mean, how challenging was that having to be successful in both tennis and academics and balancing both uh, things? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel like, you know, you have to be very organized. You have to be very, uh, have a strong work ethic and be um, disciplined. Um, but I feel like um, growing up, that was sort of the way I did things anyway. So, so playing in college, um, it was a little bit easier than, than playing in, in um, high school because school and tennis was all combined um, in that like my whole world was was BU and that was um, tennis and school. Whereas before I felt like I almost lived a couple different lives. So I had my tennis life and I had my academic life and I had my family life and at BU it just kind of brought it all together. Um, but I think, you know, being very structured and having a schedule and, um, being able to balance things is really critical. I think also um, knowing when you need a break. Um, so you can't, you know, always push yourself a hundred percent all the time or you burn out. So knowing when, you know, you need to um, have a rest day. And I think Leslie was great at that to, to, to always recognize when we needed a day of rest or, you know, when we were pushing ourselves too much um, and, you know, most, most people that I've met that are play tennis or an individual sport try and tend to be self-starters and push themselves individually enough. Um, and so sometimes you need that coach to, to be that, um, that reason to say like, Hey, okay, you know, we're taking the next two days off or we're, this is a rest day. So, um, but I think, um, I felt like when I was in season, which was most of the time at BU, except for the, a few winter months, um, I felt more productive because I knew like, okay, I only have these chunks of time when I can do schoolwork. So I need to be really efficient and effective of what I'm doing. Um, and I didn't have much time to waste time. And when I had more time on my hands, I would obviously like goof off or, you know, do things that um, weren't always as productive. So sometimes my grades were almost better when I was in season versus out of season. <laughs> Right. No, that, that totally makes sense. Um, one other question about your time with the women's tennis program. I mean, do you have any favorite um, memories that still kind of come up, whether athletically or athletic accomplishment or just the time spent with your teammates? Yeah. I mean, I feel like when I think about my time at BU, um, there's a lot of great memories that come up and a lot of them involve tennis. Um, you know, a lot of my closest friends are um, my teammates that um, that I played with. So um, my doubles partner was Heidi Stiber. Um, I still talk to her at least a couple times a month. Um, Anne Marie Sheehan was one of my roommates. Um, Liz Clay was with one of my roommates. So so even though um, we you know we lived together, we played together. Like it, I was constantly around, sort of my 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 uh, group there at BU. Um, I would say beating BC was always a big highlight. Um, we beat Harvard, that was a big highlight. Um, and we always, I think in all my years, we won the conference championships. I think one year we didn't play the conference title because we um, had another big tournament that I can't BC, remember. BC. Um, yeah, and so um, so we that was the only year we didn't win the conference title because we weren't in it. Um, 
so those were um, some big highlights. Um, the other thing, which obviously isn't a highlight, but I do, um, I know Travis Roy just passed away. I believe I was a senior when he was a freshman. It's sort of like, I remember exactly where I was when he had his accident. Um, and while I didn't know him well, um, it, I don't know, it impacted me as, as a terrier. And so I always made sure I gave to his organization and will continue to give to his organization. And I actually came back when he spoke to the athletes a couple of years ago, because um, I don't know, it was just something that impacted me when I was at BU that a fellow um, terrier athlete, um, you know, went through and then what he became and what he, what good he did, um, you know, in turning a tragedy into, you know, something good for others. No, for sure. I mean, obviously the outpouring of support um, once the news came out was just incredible to see. Um, yeah. Just social media and the, the media coverage, it, it really was incredible. Uh, but no, thank you very much for, for sharing that story. Um, to follow up on that, um, obviously the BU community, um, especially for student athletes, it's very tight. And I know you've continued to come back to campus and support Leslie and her efforts with the women's tennis program. Why is that so important for you to still stay involved uh, with the community? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things um, giving back was sort of a value instilled in me from my parents. Um, and I never lost sight of the fact that BU gave so much to me. I don't know if the glare behind me is strong, <laughs> sorry. Um, so um, I always made it a made it a goal of mine that no matter what I was going to give back to BU right when I graduated. So, um, and now that I have two young boys, we love being active with BU. So we, uh, you know, we go to the, at least one hockey game or two a year. Um, we try to go to any alumni event that we can go to at BU. I think we did an ice skating thing this past year at BU. Um, where um, Rhett was out. My kids had never been ice skating. So the first time they got to ice skate at BU was, was a highlight. Um, so I don't know, I just, I have a lot of pride in being a Terrier and I want to, um, I want to pay that forward to others. Um, and so every year I always challenge myself to give a little bit more than I have in, in the past, um, whether it's to the tennis team um, or the Western School of Business or wherever my roots were at BU. So. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to continue doing that. But I, I just think it's important to um, know where I came from. And Leslie gave me that that chance and to give back to um, to her and to others that gave me that great education. So just a, a couple more questions for you. Can you just talk about um, what happened after you graduated from BU and the career path you went and what you're doing now? Yeah. So I work, um, I currently work at PwC, which is a professional services firm. And I've actually been there since graduation. So I'm almost 25 years there, which sounds, sounds a little crazy because it feels like I was just at BU. Um, so I, as I said, I was a business major and I majored in accounting. Uh, so I actually started my career as an auditor. Um, and soon after I made my way over to try different parts of the business, I did internal audit, I did um, recruiting, and now I'm the Northeast people leader, which I would say, you know, if you had to ask me a dream job is probably my dream job. I, um, I get to coach um, individuals. I do executive coaching about 40% of my time. And the rest of my time, I look at our people strategy and how do we drive our people strategy in the market. Um, and a lot of what we're looking at is wellness. You know, how do we look at the future of digitization and different things like that? So um, really looking at our people retention and um, performance strategy. So um, it's been great too, to when I, I mentioned I did recruiting, I came back sometimes to BU um, for different events. So it always is great to keep my foot um, at BU and, and seeing the students. Well, and speaking of students, I mean, obviously there's been a lot going on with the economy. What advice would you give uh, to the women's tennis players and students in Questron about how to handle the future once they graduate? Yeah, and I know it's funny you mentioned that there's two um, BU tennis players that work at my company in the same office. And so it's, it's always nice to have fellow uh, Terriers there. I think my big advice is always the power of network. So um, 
you know, my dad taught me that when I was in school. He said, you know, you should take as many interviews as you can and, and start to meet people and, and interview and get those skills and just build your network. You're not interviewing for that particular job. Sometimes you're always, you know, building your network for the future opportunities. So I would say, um, you know, BU has a strong network of alum and the, to the extent that you can connect with some of the alum, whether they're in your profession, you know, that you, that you want to go to, whether it's business communications or whatever, um, you know, try to reach out and make some of those natural connections. Um, as a recruiter, I always pushed LinkedIn. So make sure you have your LinkedIn profile up, make sure you're looking at common commonalities that you have within your LinkedIn profile and others that you want to connect with. Um, and I think, you know, being a student athlete is always a great um, segue into a lot of topics with people that you meet and people always want to know, like, you know, how, how was it playing a sport and, um, you know, being in school or, or things like that. And, and those are sometimes some great skills that you can showcase when you're looking for a job. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining me, Carrie, and uh, sharing the stories of your time at BU. Very much appreciated. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Terrier Tuesdays. Give us a follow on our social media accounts at BU Athletics on Twitter and Instagram for more content.